Hello, and welcome to this video series covering Sitecore and Docker. My name is Rob Earlham and I'm a technical evangelist with Sitecore, and today we're going to take a look at the Docker Images repository. The Sitecore Docker Images repository is an open source GitHub repository which you can access today. This has been created with a whole heap of contributions from the community and they've really helped to guide us to where we are today. Once you clone down this repository, you not only get examples of how to build Sitecore Docker images, but also how you can compose them together into a fully functioning system. So how do you build the images themselves? Well, you start off by working with a PowerShell script, which is called build.ps1. You execute that script and it's gonna walk through and build all of the different images you need. But there's some parameters you need to pass in that control what gets built and how they're built. The first two are your Sitecore username and password for dev.sitecore that you use to download the software itself. It needs these because when you first execute the script, it's gonna go off and it's gonna download all the packages it needs to build the images you specified. These are also the only two mandatory parameters required to execute this script. The next parameter you can specify is the Sitecore version. This allows you to specify what versions of Sitecore you want to build your images for. There are instructions in the repository to build images for every version of Sitecore from 9.02 all the way up to the current version of 9.3. Now this is an optional parameter. So if you don't specify it when you execute the script, it'll default to only build the images for the latest version, 9.3. The next parameter is the optional topology parameter. This allows you to specify which topologies you want to build your images for. This could be experience management, experience platform, or experience commerce. And it's an array parameter, so you can specify any combination of those values. By default, the script will build experience management and experience platform images. Next up is the optional Windows version parameter. This specifies which base Windows images we want to use to build our Sitecore images. The possible values are 1909, 1903, and the long-term support 2019 images. By default, it will only choose the long-term support 2019 images. The next few parameters are switch parameters. That means that you just need to include these when you execute them. There is no value, but including these changes the functionality again. You can select to include Sitecore PowerShell images. You can include Sitecore Experience Accelerator images, and you can select to include Sitecore JavaScript services images. We have an optional parameter that, that allow you to skip any images that already exist in the system. And we also have a parameter to include any experimental images. Some of the images in the repository are marked as experimental. For example, images based on the publishing service. The final parameter is based on whether you want to push your images out to a private registry. And I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit more later in the video. Okay, so let's build some images. I fired up a PowerShell window. And I'm just gonna paste in a build command. You can see we're calling the build PowerShell script. I'm passing in my Sitecore username and password for dev.sitecore. And then I'm gonna change some of the default values I just talked about. First of all, I don't just wanna build my XM and XP images. I also wanna build XC. So I'm gonna change the topology parameter to include all three. Next, I'm gonna use some of the switch parameters I mentioned. And I'm gonna tell it to also build my Sitecore PowerShell extensions images, my Sitecore SXA images, and also my Sitecore JavaScript services images. So I can hit enter, and this is gonna run off and start to build these for me. It starts off by calculating which images it needs to build, and whether it has all of the packages downloaded from dev.sitecore that it needs to action the build process. And once it has everything together, it's gonna to go and start to build these images for me. With a fresh build being run from the first time, this takes about two hours to proceed through. So we'll leave this to run in the background, and we'll come back and take a look at it once it's finished. We talked a little bit in the previous video about the concept of layers, and I wanna show how those come into play with the different topologies and variants you build out. Now I'm just gonna be focusing here on the images built on top of the ASP.NET 4.8 Windows Server Core Long-Term Support 2019 image. And that covers a lot of the Sitecore images, but there are some based on different base images, things like your SQL Server images and any images running on .NET Core. So things like some of the XConnect images. So we started off by setting the topology parameter and we included experience management, experience platform, and experience commerce. So when you start with Sitecore Experience Manager or XM, 
you get your XM content management image and you'll get an XM content delivery image. Experience Platform or XP is very similar. You get your XP standalone image, which is the equivalent to content management in XM. You also get your content delivery image for XP. You also get two more, one for Sitecore Identity and one for XConnect. The other one we included was Commerce. When you choose to build the Experience Commerce or XC images, you get things like the Commerce Business Tools and the four Commerce Engine instances. We also now start to see the concept of layers come into play because the Commerce ones build on top of the XP ones. You can see we get a Commerce flavor of the standalone image, which is built on top of the XP one. We get a Commerce version of the content delivery image built on top of the XP one. The same for identity and the same for XConnect. So you can see how changing that topology parameter we passed into build.ps1 affects the different images that get built. But what about the variant parameters we passed in? We also told the script we wanted to build the Sitecore PowerShell extensions variants. So what did that give us? Well, that gave us a few other images as well. We now got an SPE flavor of the content management for XM and XP and also content delivery for XC. We chose to build the Sitecore Experience Accelerator or SXA variants. And you can see that gave us an SXA flavor of both the content management and standalone for XM, XP and XC. It also gave us a SXA flavor of the content delivery images. Again, for XM, XP and XC. We chose to build the Sitecore JavaScript services or JSS variants as well. And you can see a pattern evolving here. With JSS, you get a JSS flavor of CM for both XM and XP, and you get a JSS flavor of CD for both XM and XP. There's also a combination image where you get SXA and JSS together. You get a flavor of the CM image for both XM and XP, and again for the CD image for both XM and XP. When you include XC and SXA variants, you'll also get SXA storefront. That gives you an SXA storefront variant based on top of the XC SXA standalone and the XC SXA content delivery. So you can see how this concept of layers allows you to build on all of the functionality from the layer below. And you can see how changing the topology and the different switch parameters can greatly affect which images actually get generated by the system. So that's all well and good. We've generated these images, but now what can we do with them? Well, the Docker Images repository comes with a series of example Docker Compose files. Docker Compose allows you to create multiple containers with a single command. The idea being that you can create an entire holistic system built up of different containers all communicating with each other. And there are 22 different examples in the Docker Images repository for different cycle topologies you'd want to stand up. We have examples covering XM, XP, and XC. And of course, we have examples covering Cycle PowerShell extensions, Cycle Experience Accelerator, JavaScript services, and many more besides. So I think it's about time we check whether that build script's finished. Okay, so I've hopped back over to PowerShell, and we can see the build process is finished. And it's given me an output of all 64 of the different images it's built. We can also start to interact with Docker to see these images now. If I do a docker image ls or list command, that'll list me all of the active images on my system. And you can see there's some in there which have this name non non. And these are what are known as intermediary or dangling images. They're created as part of the build process, but they're not really needed after that. So to tidy those up, you can run a docker system prune. And that'll go through and it'll remove all of these dangling images for you. So if I go and run docker image list again, you can see we now get a much tidier list of images. If we look at the bottom, we can see the Microsoft images, the base images that we build on top of. And throughout the list here, we can see the various different topologies and variants we chose. We can see images for XM. We can see images for XP. We can see images for XC. We can see images for Sitecore PowerShell extensions. We can see images for Sitecore Experience Accelerator. And we can see images for Sitecore JavaScript services. Another thing I want to talk about here is the size of these images. You can see the column on the right shows how big each of these images are, but that doesn't actually represent the size of the images on disk. If we take a look at our XM example, it was based on the .NET ASP.NET image, which you can see at the bottom here, and that's 8.06 gigabytes in size. We also have our XM CD image and our XM CM image. Both of those at 9.24 gigabytes in size. 
at first glance, it may look like these three images combined would take up 26.54 gigabytes of hard disk space. But because of the concept of shared layers, that's not the case. The .NET ASP.NET image only exists once on disk. And because of that, we actually have to subtract that value away from the image sizes of our CD and CM images, which means that the total actual size on disk is only just over 10 gigabytes. So while it may look like these images are taking up a lot of disk space, it isn't actually as much as is represented on screen here. So, as I just mentioned, we can use Docker Compose to take these images and build complete sitecore systems out of them. But before we can do that, we need to store our license information inside of an environment variable. As this is a repository for building shared images, the license file can't be stored inside it. So we're gonna load it in from an environment variable. There's a script provided with this Docker images repo and it'll store the content of that license file in an environment variable for me. Now we have that stored, we can go and stand up some sitecore instances. First of all, I'm gonna load up the Windows directory. Then there's some test files in there. And I'm gonna load up 9.3, because that's the version of sitecore I'm running. If we take a look in there, we can see there's a series of Docker Compose files for different topologies and variants. I'm gonna start with something really simple, and that's just gonna be a basic sitecore XM topology. So you start by typing Docker Compose. Then we're gonna tell it which file we want to compose from. We're going to use the docker-compose.xm.yaml file. We're going to use the up command to tell it to bring up this set of containers. And we're going to use the dash D flag to tell it to run in disconnected mode. So the containers won't be connected to this PowerShell window. And you can see it's told us it's created four containers. If we use the docker ps-a command, we can get a bit more information. Here you can see the four containers that have been created. We have one for our SQL server, a solar container to store all of our indexes, and a content delivery container, and a content management container. You can also see some ports that have been assigned to each of these, and that's how I can access them from my host machine. So let's get a browser and try and access the CD and CM instances. Using port 44001, we can start to load up the site called admin interface. In another tab, I'll load up the CD, the actual site itself. So we can see the CD instance is loaded, and we can access the Default Sitecore landing page. Let's take a look at the other tab for the CM. We can log in with the usual Sitecore password. And here we can see the Sitecore admin interface is loaded up, all running inside of those four different Docker containers. Okay, so let's jump back to PowerShell. Running an XM architecture is quite a simple example. So let's look at something a little more complicated. First of all, I'm gonna bring down those containers I just created. And you do that in a similar way to how I brought them up. We use the docker compose command, again, passing the same file name, but well, this time we say down instead. And that'll bring down all of the containers associated with that Docker Compose file. Now, a lot of those containers, especially the Solar and SQL containers, actually save their data to folders on my host machine through the use of Docker volumes. And for that reason, we need to clean those up before we can stand up a different sitecore architecture. To do that, there is a script that's provided, again, as part of the Docker images repo, and it's just called cleandata.ps1. So anytime you switch between different architectures using the Docker images repo, you're gonna to have to make sure you run that script to tear down all the temporary data before you can start up a new one. Let's take another look at these Docker Compose files. This time, I think I'm gonna stand up an XP instance with PowerShell extensions. So once more, we're gonna use Docker Compose. We tell it we're gonna use a specific file name. And we're gonna use the Docker Compose XP, SPE.yaml file. We'll tell it to bring those containers up. And once more, we'll run it in disconnected mode. That's completed, and you can see we have a lot more containers this time. Let's run the docker ps a command again to get a bit more information. Some of the containers look similar to the ones from the previous command. We still have our SQL container, our solar container, our CD, and our CM. Obviously, as this is an XP architecture, there are more application elements required, primarily all of the XConnect instances. So let's jump over to the browser again and take a look at the management interface. So let's again use the usual admin password. And here you can see we now have a functional XP instance with all the different XP applications enabled. And the key thing to take away here is just how quick and easy it was to stand up an initial instance of Sitecore, tear it down and stand up a completely new one. So much faster than going through a typical installation procedure. So what we've looked at so far 
is how a single developer can take these scripts and build these images into their local registry. But how does that work if you're part of a team? You don't really want each individual developer to have to go through that process themselves. Because with the lengthy build process involved, there's quite a lot of time overhead there. Instead, what you want to do is to start to leverage a private registry. In that way, you can have the build process performed once, push these images into your private registry, and then have the rest of your team share them. Meaning that build process only gets executed a single time instead of being executed for every developer. So let's take a look at how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna use Azure Container Registries or ACR for this. I've already created one in my resource group called Rob SC Images. I'm gonna load it up and I'm gonna to go to the Access Keys section. And I wanna double check that the admin user is enabled and then we can use the username and password specified here to be able to authenticate with this ACR instance. So let's hop over to PowerShell. First of all, I'm going to run an AC login command, which is going to log me into uh, my Azure CLI. That's completed. So the next thing I need to do is actually log into my ACR, my container registry instance. We use the username and password that were just specified to me in the Azure portal. That's completed. So now I can use the build scripts once more to actually push these images out to my container registry. We're going to use pretty much the same build command we used last time. The same topology, the same username and password for a dev.sitecore, and the same variant settings. However, this time we're going to include the registry details at the end. And this is the URL of the registry that we got from the Azure portal before. This is now going to go and run through and it shouldn't rebuild the images that already exist, but what it will do is that it will start to actually push those out to my container registry for me. So we'll leave this to run through and we'll come back and take a look when it's finished. Okay, so this is completed now and we can see the list of images that have been built and pushed again. I'm gonna hop back over to the Azure portal. Once more, I've loaded up my ACR instance, but this time I'm gonna to go to the repositories tab. And now you can see all the images would have been pushed and are available in this registry. So any other developers on my team can simply pull the images down themselves and don't have to go through that entire build process. So I just want to finish up with a few tips and tricks to get you started. If you don't want to wait for all these packages to download from dev.sitecore, maybe you've already got them downloaded somewhere on your hard disk, you can manually copy those into a packages folder at the root of the Docker images repository, and then it'll skip the download step for you. As we're building Windows images, you also need to make sure that you're running Docker locally in Windows containers mode. It won't work if you're running in Linux mode. If you find disk space is becoming an issue after you've built all these images, don't forget you can use a system prune command to clean up all the dangling intermediary images and free up a bit of that disk space for you. Also, don't forget to run clean data.ps1 when changing system. If you don't do this, then the database and index files will remain from the previous system you stood up and the new system won't function properly. Finally, it might be a good idea to check your power management settings if you intend to walk away from your machine while the build is being executed. You don't want your machine to shut down halfway through due to a lack of user activity. If you want to learn more about this, you can access the Docker Images repository at the URL you see here. And there's also a super active Docker channel in the Sitecore community chat, again at the URL on screen. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow the Learn Sitecore hashtag for future videos.